Hello and welcome to Reefcraft. Today we're going to be looking at wild crustaceans and it's probably the most deadly thing I can do being deadly allergic to them, which I know is pretty ironic being a marine scientist, but anyway. You'll notice a lot of this footage is shot at night and that's because it's so much easier to find these guys out and about during the evenings and you can also see the eye shine like you can see in that stingray there. What I'm going to show you is a heap of different species, some you might have already seen or recognised that you see in your tanks and things like that, but hopefully there's a few that you've never heard of or seen before in the wild. Alright, let's kick things off with a really cool one. This is the Sarasvati shrimp, and in this clip I've actually caught it in the middle of cleaning this clownfish. These shrimp are at home in between the stinging tentacles of the anemone, which offers protection from predators. It's in here that they'll actually set up a cleaning station for other animals and fish to come by. They'll then wave their antennae to get the attention of anyone coming past who wants to get cleaned. Then the shrimp will actually jump onto the fish, cleaning its mouth, gills and all over its body and scales. They'll even do this with divers. This next one is the hingeback shrimp. Now, this one is actually typically pretty hard to spot until you see one and then you can't stop seeing them. You can see them all in the background. They pretty much fill all the crevices in reefs that they preside in. Unfortunately for how pretty this shrimp is, they also smash corals. So they'll eat all your polyps and anemones and things like that. So they are not reef safe. And this next one's a very recognizable species. This is Stenopus hispidus, or more commonly known as the coral banded shrimp. A really cool fact about these guys that I bet you didn't know is they actually extend their range into temperate areas. Now I know all this footage is from tropical reefs, but they're found all the way down Western Australia and Eastern Australia coasts. It is also a cleaner shrimp. So it does that thing where it waves its antennae just to get the attention of other fish to come across and get a clean. For this next one, I need more footage of this. These are those dancing shrimp that you see on TikTok, but they're just too far away and I didn't find them at night, so I couldn't get a close-up shot, but you can sort of see where they live. They're living in a large sponge deep in there and there's absolutely hundreds of them. Next up, I'm gonna show you some clips of different mantis shrimp. Now, what you might not know is there's actually heaps of different species. This one here in particular is a spearing mantis and they tend to hide in the sand in burrows like this, waiting for passing by fish. In this next clip, you actually see how we communicate underwater. This is how we describe a mantis shrimp underwater with the flicking fingers. Now, if you look at the eyes sticking out of the sand, they are the freakiest things. They have such good vision and it far exceeds any human. We can only see three channels of color, while mantis shrimps actually can see it through 12 different channels, including UV and polarized light, which is truly mind blowing when you think about it. Now the fish hunting spearing mantis aren't the only ones. There's also ones that are nicknamed thumb splitters because they're punching mantis and they typically hunt things like crustaceans. And you can actually see a peacock mantis shrimp sort of just running away from me here. And I thought I was too unlikely to film it, but I waited around and I managed to get this footage of the same mantis. Instead of having this spear, they have a club-like structure at the end of their arm. And when they use it to strike their prey, it can actually have the force of a 22 caliber rifle. It also hits so hard, it causes the water to cavitate. So even if it misses its prey, the resulting shockwave can kill or stun it. I added this clip in to show you the variation in these species. These are little smashes or punches that are running around in about two to five centimeters of water when the tide is out. Now, these guys were everywhere in the shallows around Fiji and you actually see this one coming up next, finding another species of mantis shrimp and actually hitting it right there. And the other mantis actually comes back out and chases this one down the hole you see there. So I highly recommend going out and walking around the shallows. Just be careful of the coral. You can see all the digitata growing throughout this whole area. Go back to my last video if you want to learn more about the Montipora. But you never know what you're going to find in the shallows and it is so much fun. So get out there and tell me what you find. Okay, this one, I'm going to bet that you haven't seen it before in an aquarium. It is an orangutan crab. Now these are particularly rare and they usually tend to hang out on bubble coral. But this one I found in amongst all that fire coral. And you actually see my dive buddy point at it here, just there to the right hand side of that feather duster. Now don't worry, there's a better shot. Here's one actually out actively crawling across this bubble coral. 
They get their name because of the orange-like hairs that grow all over its body. And these will actually collect sediment and different things that further its camouflage. And they actually also blend into the algae you can see in the background. So whenever you see bubble coral in the wild, always check to see if one of these guys is hanging out on it. Another freaky crustacean you probably won't see in an aquarium is this slipper lobster. Now this is a sculpted slipper lobster. There are different types, but you typically don't see them unless you're swimming or snorkeling at night. And if you do, you'll see heaps of them. That's because they're really good cleanup crew. They are carnivorous and they'll actually rip apart mollusks and different things with their powerful legs. Apart from that, they just blend in really well with the shape and colorations of their body. They're almost impossible to see during the day. Speaking of things that are almost impossible to see, this is a hairy squat lobster, or also known as the fairy crab. This is a very specialized crab covered in these fine hairs that you can kind of see covering its body, and I almost only ever find them in these sponges. Another species of crab that uses sponges is this Loridromia species. It uses a sponge's camouflage and it goes out and it finds the perfect sponge and molds it to its body. They also keep caches of these sponges so that if they lose another one, they know where they put the other. This next one is a really cool species of shrimp. It is the Pacific Clown Anemone Shrimp. And whenever I tend to find them, they usually are in these pizza anemones. But they can also host a heap of different anemones as well. This shrimp feeds on the mucus and any leftover food from the anemone. They also feed on detritus and any other small microinvertebrates. These shrimp are actually sexually dimorphic as well. You can see the male down the bottom there. He's tiny when in comparison to the female. The female also has a lot more spots and more pronounced spots all across its body. They are pretty common, but they do tend to be pretty hard to find because they'll actually run away from divers once you see them. So you can see this one retreating back into the anemone. Once you spot them though, they're pretty hard to miss. I actually found this one on an island off Cairns. It was in about 60 centimeters of water and I actually couldn't believe I found one that shallow. You almost always find them in pairs and when you only find one, usually the male has run off or is hiding under the lip or the skirt of the anemone and won't come out until you leave the area. Oh, and it's super obvious when they've got eggs, the females are clear so you can actually see the orange eggs through their body. Keep an eye out for that. Now these next ones are hard to ID because I am no good with acro crabs, but this is the red guard crab, or as I always have called them, acro crabs. They get their name because they're always living in these SBS corals like Possilopora, Acropora, Seriotopora, like the one you can see here. And what they actually do is they make a home in between the branches and actually guard that coral. If you actually look real close underneath, you can actually see a citron goby underneath there as well. Now, it's believed that these crabs help maintain the coral colony and keep it healthy and also protect it from predators like the crown of thorns starfish. Now, in tanks, I know a lot of people blame these guys for their corals dying, but it's most likely that the coral is already sick and they're trying to clean it, or there simply is just not enough room for them. Now, it wouldn't be a video without some pistol shrimp, but these guys are so incredibly hard to film. As soon as you get anywhere close, you'll see the goby here actually shooting back and telling the shrimp to go back in as danger. So what I did is I waited around for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes to let them gain my trust and I could actually film this shrimp pushing out and maintaining the hole. This is such a cool relationship because the shrimp maintains the burrow while the fish guards and protects them from any sort of predation and will warn them like this to go back into the burrow if something gets too close like myself. I'm gonna try and work on how to film this and I'll bring you more footage in the future. Up next, we have the Sauron Marmoratus, otherwise known as the common marbled shrimp. These guys are super common at night, mainly because they live around coral rubble and only really emerge towards the evenings. They are such good cleaners and they'll actually sift through all the detritus, cleaning up all food scraps, but also will eat anything that dies and sort of lays on the surface of the ocean. But nowhere deep, they're always in lagoons and things like that. A cool fact about these guys, their eyes stand out like you wouldn't believe. And because their name is Sauron, I always call them the Sauron shrimp because it looks like the eye of Sauron. I know, not really that funny, but yeah. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and go back and check out what else we've been filming. We've done corals, fish, everything you can think of. We've probably done. I'll throw up some videos on screen now. And if there's anything in particular that you want to get filmed, drop a comment and let me know because I head out quite often and I'll see what I can do. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I'll catch you on the next one.